Hey, mamas and papas, grandmamas and grandpapas, today I have a very special best of episode for you. You know, I often get asked, what is my favorite episode of Christian Parent Crazy World? And that is a really tough question to answer. I do love them all, but definitely near the top of the list is episode number four. Is Christianity just a religion of do's and don'ts? (laughs) This episode addresses a very serious and pervasive misconception about our faith. So enjoy this episode today and be sure to tune in next week for a very special 100th episode of CPCW. I cannot believe we are at episode 100. Woohoo! In that episode next week, I'm going to be sharing with you the number one factor in maintaining a lifelong faith. You don't want to miss it. Christian Parent Crazy World with Katherine Seegers is brought to you by Life Audio and is part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. Welcome to Christian Parent Crazy World, the podcast that tackles tough topics so we can raise godly kids in an ungodly world. I'm your host, Katherine Seegers. In this episode, we will tackle this tough question— Is Christianity just a religion of do's and don'ts? You know, this question is so critical for our faith and for our kids' faith. If we get this one wrong, the chances of our kids becoming one of those statistics that I talked about in episode one, one of the majority of kids who leaves the faith after leaving the nest is, well, I I think it's very high. I would say it's likely. Actually, I would go so far as to say that it is probable. So let's dig into this topic. Here's here's how we're going to do that. I'm going to give you a short answer to that question. Won't take long. Then I'm going to give you a slightly longer answer. I'm going to unpack it a bit. And I'm going to give you this analogy that I think is really going to help bring this concept home for you and help you in understanding how we're supposed to be relating to God and helping our kids relate to God. And then I'm going to share with you a couple of quick stories from Scripture that will bring this powerful lesson home for us. And in exploring this critical topic, I think we're going to find some freedom for ourselves and for our kids. So, is Christianity just a religion of do's and don'ts? Well, the short answer is no, but it can be. If that is how you approach the faith, if that is how you approach God. You know, this this actually was not one of the first podcast topics I had planned to address. You know, it wasn't it wasn't on the list of top ten. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't on the list. I I didn't realize what a problem this was. But I was talking to a friend of mine, Donna, and she was telling me about several young people, millennials, that she knows who have left the faith, and they were having this crisis of their faith, one of the primary reasons is they had a very legalistic faith and they had approached their faith through this list of do's and don'ts. And they had the wrong approach to God and they ditched the Christian faith because that approach was all wrong. And I I had this kind of eureka moment and I realized, oh, wow, I really need to address this in a podcast. Let me, let me tell you a little bit more about one of those people that uh, Donna had met. Donna met Angel at an Airbnb she happened to be staying at. Angel had been raised in a Christian home, but she had the kind of faith that was very legalistic. It was all about the do's and don'ts. She she never even had an opportunity to choose a path. The path was just forced on her by her parents, actually. And Angel was shocked that Donna, who is from my generation, which is... a couple of decades older, uh, was a Christian and that she didn't just want to shake an index finger in her face and tell her everything that she was doing wrong. That shocked her because that's all she knew about Christians. (sighs) So sad. And, you know, and Donna just wanted to be her friend. She just wanted to have a relationship with her. But it was very clear that Angel had approached her relationship with God through a checklist. And this checklist was imposed on her by her parents, not by God. Her relationship with God had been a duty. There was no delight in that relationship. 
And why, why would you keep a relationship like that, by the way? I can't really think of a good reason. At a certain point, avoiding hell isn't a deterrent anymore because you just decide you're not going to believe all that stuff because you're miserable. In a way, you're living in a hell here on earth. And if the enemy can get our kids to approach God through a long list of do's and don'ts, if that is all the faith is to them, our kids, they're going to ditch the faith. They're going to find something better, something that doesn't make them feel rotten all the time, like they have to constantly be perfect and perform in order to please God. That, that is not the Christian faith. That is a counterfeit. That is not what God intended our relationship with him to be. You know, my pastor always says that Christianity has a branding problem, and I couldn't agree more. He is so right. Christianity has a big branding problem, and that is by design. The enemy wants us to approach God through this impossible list of do's and don'ts, and we're either so bound up in legalism that we're no good for God, or we're so miserable that we chuck the faith because we think God is no good for us. That is the enemy's plan. But that is not God's plan. That is not what the Christian faith is intended to be. Christianity is not intended to be a long list of do's and don'ts. That, that is a religion. And you may have heard this before. I hope you have. Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. The problem is, we, we keep wanting to go back and make it into a checklist, into a religion. And that is exactly what the enemy wants us to do and, and your kids to do. Because then the faith will become such a burden and we will want to get out from under that burden. And actually, that is a natural God-given desire to get out from under that burden, that weight of, of guilt and sin. We weren't designed to carry that. We were designed to give that burden to God. Jesus came to get us out from underneath that burden, the burden of of perfection, the burden of the list of do's and don'ts. Now, does that mean that the list of do's and don'ts doesn't exist? Uh, Actually, no. (laughs) There is a list, but we've got to look at the list through the right lens. The list is there to protect us. It is not there to make us acceptable to God. And here's, here's where I have that analogy for you. When my oldest daughter, Afton, was two, she used to love to help me with the the dishwasher. Of course, I did not want my two-year-old helping me unload the dishwasher because I was really trying to be a good mom. And I didn't want my two-year-old holding forks and and knives and breakable glass objects that could maim or kill her. Um, But the way my, my house was set up, Afton could round this corner while I had my back turned and I was putting something away. And before I knew it, she had some dangerous object in her hands that could seriously injure or kill her. And all of these these awful scenarios are running through my young mom mind. You, you probably know how that is. It's terrifying. It keeps you up at night. So emptying the dishwasher was a major no-no in our house for my toddler. It was on the don't list. And I, I would shake an index finger in, in Afton's sweet little face, and I would give her a firm no. And that bottom lip would come out, and the eyes would swell, and the tears would come and she felt really awful. And, and, you know, maybe she even thought that mommy was angry at her and didn't like her. Of course that, of course that wasn't true. Just the opposite was true, but I had to be firm. Unloading the dishwasher was on the don't list. But despite scolding my sweet little girl, two minutes later, she was always grabbing at something else out of the dishwasher. The deterrent wasn't strong enough. But I didn't want to do anything stronger because, well, she's two, you know. So one day, I think that Afton is in the den, and I'm unloading the dishwasher, and I've got my back turned putting some dishes away, and and I hear this blood-curdling scream. And I turn around, and I see my daughter with a huge clump of undissolved dishwasher detergent in her hand. And, of course, where had that gone? (laughs) It had gone in her mouth because that is what toddlers do. They put everything in their mouths. So my daughter had this poisonous substance in her mouth 
something that could burn her her tongue and her esophagus and her stomach and all of her little insides. So, of course, I, I scoop her up and I swipe her mouth out and I'm on the phone with poison control and I realize that <laughs> my weak deterrent of a firm no with my index finger was not getting the job done. I needed something much stronger. That, however, is a topic for another podcast. The point is that my list of do's and don'ts in my house did not exist to be punitive. And it certainly didn't exist to prevent something good from coming into my daughter's life, nor was it the means by which I intended for us to relate to each other. A relationship, it, it, it wasn't about the do's and don'ts. It wasn't about that list. It wasn't like I thought, oh, well, if, if you do all these things on the do list and you don't do all the things on the don't list, mommy will love you and, and, and be pleased with you and reach you and take you to the park to play. But if you don't, well, mommy is going to be mad at you and, and ignore you and shake my finger in your face and I won't want to spend time with you and I won't love you. <laughs> I mean, that might have been going through her head, but but that wasn't my motivation. That wasn't why I created the list. The list of do's and don'ts in my house was about one thing, one thing. It was about protecting my daughter. The don't list was about preventing my daughter from burning her mouth and her esophagus and ending up on the phone with poison control and, and having to get her stomach pumped. Thankfully, we did not have to get her stomach pumped. Thank God. Oh, my gosh. It would have been awful. But we need to understand ourselves and we need to help our kids understand that the list of do's and don'ts in the Bible isn't about making God happy and making him want to spend time with us. It isn't about making us acceptable to God. We are acceptable to God because of what Jesus did, not because of what we do or don't do. I want to be abundantly clear here, please hear this. The list of do's and don'ts in scripture is not about us pleasing God. The list is about God protecting us. That is so important, so important that I'm actually going to repeat myself. The list isn't about pleasing God. The list is not the means by which we are intended to relate to God. The list is about protecting us. You know, my church has this amazing small group that they encourage all of our members to go through. It's called Freedom. And this course talks about how there are two ways that we can approach God. And these two different approaches to God are given to us in the very first book of the Bible. It is the very first story. There are two trees in the garden, and they represent the two approaches we have to God. First, there's the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and you could call this the do's and don'ts tree. You can approach God through this big list of do's and don'ts and constantly try to please him, and you will constantly be miserable because you will constantly feel like you are failing, which you will if you approach God through this tree, through the list of do's and don'ts. Or you can approach God through the other tree, the tree of life. That tree is about a relationship. That tree is about God's overwhelming love for you and his desire to spend time with you every day. That tree is about the purpose he has for your life and your kids' lives. It's about the ways he wants to bless you and use you to do amazing things in the world. Everything, everything about that tree is good. And when we look at the list of do's and don'ts in scripture through the lens of that tree, we realize, oh, okay, God is trying to protect me because he loves me. And even when I screw up and do something on the don't list, that, that doesn't cut me off from God. That doesn't make him mad at me. The shaking index finger isn't about anger. Actually, it's about love. It's about protection. When I do something on the don't list, that makes God want to scoop me up in his ever-loving arms and swipe my mouth out to get that poison out of me. Then he wants to embrace me and, and hold me so close that I'll never want to leave him and I will never want to hurt myself again. And hopefully next time I will trust him and believe him and listen to him and obey him so I don't hurt myself. 
But even if I do hurt myself again, he will scoop me up again and again and again as many times as I fail. And he will clean me up and love me and embrace me because he loves us more more than we can imagine, more than we love our own kids. That's how much he loves us. You know, there are a couple of awesome stories in scripture that Jesus tells, and I want to end this podcast with them. I love these stories so much. They truly represent the Father's heart towards us. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus tells the story of a shepherd who had a hundred sheep, but one of them wanders away. You could say he's doing stuff on the don't list because he was. And the shepherd, the good shepherd, leaves the 99 sheep to go after the one who is wandering because he loves that sheep so much. He's more concerned about the one sheep who is breaking all the don'ts on the list than the 99 sheep who are living by the do's. It's not about the list. It's about his love. His love covers that list. And it brings us back home. And this one other story, uh, I just love this story. It comes from the same chapter in Luke 15. It's the story of the prodigal son. I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard this story many times. Why don't we look at it just one more time through the lens of God's amazing love for us. So in this story, a loving father, he has two sons, and the younger son decides that he does not want to live close to his father anymore. He doesn't like the list. He thinks it's oppressive and and binding and punitive. So he asks for his inheritance, and he leaves his loving father in the home. And things go well for a while. He has lots of money and friends, and he's, he's living it up, doing all the things he shouldn't be doing on the don't list, right? But then he loses all of his money, and then naturally he loses all of his friends, and he's starving and and sick and cold, and he gets a job feeding pigs, and the pigs have a better life than he does. That's what comes of living on the don't list, and he decides, you know, I'm going to go back home because the servants in my father's house are living better than I am, but he's worried, right? Surely his dad is going to be mad. Surely his dad is sitting up on that big chair ready to whack the boy if he ever comes home. He should be furious. After all, the son broke all of the rules on the list. This is what the son is thinking, right? Meanwhile, the father is not sitting on his big dad chair waiting to whack his son. No. Uh -uh. He is looking out the window every day, longing, hoping praying to see his son come home. And I love this. This is the most beautiful passage of scripture. The son is on his way back home. And and this is what the scripture says in Luke 15. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him, his heart pounding. He ran out, embraced his son and kissed him. The son started his speech, father, I have sinned against God. I have sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. In other words, I've I've broken all the rules. I've done everything, everything on the don't list. But you know what the scripture says? This is what it says. The father wasn't listening. (laughs) Instead, he called to his servants and he says, quick, bring a set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his fingers and sandals on his feet. Then get a prize winning heifer and roast it. We are going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. Oh, mom. Oh, dad. We need to give our kids this picture of God. Our faith isn't about a list of do's and don'ts. Our faith is about a God who loves us enough to protect us, who loves us enough to tell us what will harm us, who loves us enough to give us a list. And even when we screw everything up, when we break every single rule, he is looking out the window. 
He is anxiously waiting with love and hope in his heart. He's waiting for us to come home. (sighs) And when we do, he will embrace us and clothe us in his righteousness, which we can't earn. And we will have a feast, a celebration, because the child who is lost is now found. That is the God of the Christian faith. That is the God we need to share with our children. He is a God of freedom, not a God of do's and don'ts. I hope you enjoyed this special best of episode of Christian Parent Crazy World. Be sure to tune in next week for our 100th episode, woohoo, where we will be discussing the number one factor in maintaining a lifelong faith. I hope you will join me for that in every future episode where we take aim at some critical aspect of our culture that threatens to derail our parenting and steal our kids' faith. I want to thank you for joining me today. Look, I know there are a lot of things that you could be listening to right now, and I really appreciate the fact that you took this time to spend with me. If you enjoyed this episode of Christian Parent Crazy World, would you consider telling a friend and and sharing it on social media and, I don't know, maybe getting a Christian Parent Crazy World tattoo? I mean, like, not on your face or anything. Just, you know, like, forearm, hand. Just a thought. And be sure to check out my website, which is katherineseegers.com. That's Catherine with a C. I have lots of articles and resources there that will help you on your parenting journey. And if you subscribe, I will be sure to send you some really cool free stuff and notify you of future podcasts, articles, and blogs. I want to end this and every episode with a word of encouragement. God gave you your kids, your specific kids for a reason. That's because you hold the key to unlocking who God created them to be. We'll see you next time. Christian Parent Crazy World is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. To hear more from Catherine Seegers, visit her site, katherineseegers.com. If you enjoyed this episode, would you take a minute and leave us a rating and review in your podcast app? It really does help us connect to more listeners like you. A special thanks to Kelly Gibbons, Stephen Sanders, and Stephen McGarvey for their production and editing on this episode. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com.